What's up, everybody? Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the top five aim tips so that you can hit every ability and every shot. So I'm going to be breaking down the five most fundamental things that you absolutely have to know and what you need to practice that you can just pop off and dominate mechanically no matter what character you're on. So make sure you watch to the end, smash that like, subscribe, and go to the Game Beep website in the links down below right now. There's never been a better time with our special 50% off spring sale. We have in-depth advanced guides, VOD reviews, tips and tricks over every single character in the entire game of Overwatch. So go check it out right now in the links down below. But without further ado, Let's jump into the video. So the first thing that you need to understand is the different types of weapon fire because people kind of loosely understand what these mean, but they directly affect how you should aim. So it's important to break down the differences because there is hit scan and there's projectile. I'm going to explain how each one of these work and the differences in aim between each one and even more differences between the types of projectile aim. So first off, let's talk about hit scan, which is you see a target, you click on them. It will register basically if that target is in your crosshair and it will instantly do damage it is called hit scan because it's basically scanning to see if you hit the target and it's happening instantly someone like soldier someone like mccree someone like widowmaker these are all hit scan type fires now unlike hit scan a lot of abilities and a lot of other types of fire are projectile where they have a certain amount of travel time now this is going to dramatically change the type of aim that you should aim between each one but let's first talk about the differences between each one and things that can happen with projectiles that cannot happen with hit scan so with hit scan you can literally either be tracking ahead or you can be flicking past ahead and all you have to do is tap the fire button as you're crossing the point where your crosshair is crossing the head and you're going to hit that target or you could even be holding your crosshair in a place and as a head crosses through your crosshair you tap it right then and you could kill a target which is something that you just can't do with projectile projectile because of the travel time you're gonna have to be leading every single one of your shots which means that type of aiming that i just described in that first section with hit scan is not gonna work with projectile there is a fair amount of reading the enemy or looking and analyzing where they're gonna go now something about projectile though is not all projectiles are the same right they all have different speeds whether it's a sleep dart or may icicle or a Hanzo arrow at different speeds or a fire rocket. Every single projectile is going to have a certain amount of specific speed to that projectile. So it's important to get used to each and every one of them. And some of them, like Hanzo's arrow, which is really, really quick, you can aim in a very similar way that you would aim with a hit scan. Not much lead, honestly, especially if you're from that mid to close range. You're basically using it like it is a hit scan. If you're using your storm arrows, you're using it like it is a hit scan. And you could aim like it is a hit scan. But if you're really far away or you're using something with a lot slower, lower travel speed you're going to need to be leading your shots a lot more now something in general that you need to understand about projectile is that there is always a percentage of failure there's always a chance that it will not hit no matter what because of the fact that enemies when they're on the ground they have their feet on the ground they can crouch they can move left they move right and because of that travel time you are always only getting a percentile Unlike hit scan, where if your crosshair's on their head, you press your trigger or your mouse button or whatever, they're going to die, but projectile is never 100% sure. You're just trying to get that number as high as possible, and when the enemy is jumping or in a fixed position, then you can actually get that number to 100%. And those are the shots that you should be trying to hit a giant percentage of the time. That's why you also, on the flip side, never jump against the main, never jump against the Hanzo, because good projectile users will hit those shots. Now, the last thing that you need to understand about this is while it can happen to both technically, it's going to happen to projectile basically way, way, way more, and it's getting no regs. For whatever reason, because of the travel time and the net code, or whatever the case may be, projectiles can have a pretty large chance of hitting a target, you see it hit a target, Target, and you get no damage that's what we call a no reg or no registration and it can be pretty frustrating but as long as you shake it off don't let it affect you it's not gonna happen so much to where it's gonna ruin your overall win rate on the character but it's something that does happen a lot less with hit scan because it's a lot easier to process when there's less moving parts and less things to register now the next thing that we need to answer or the next big question we need to answer is why do you miss all the damn time because sometimes it feels like maybe you can hit all your shots while you're in training right but when you go into an actual game you can't well there's several reasons for that but the biggest reason that i find actually is because of your own movement you see overwatch is very unique from a movement standpoint because you can move left and right and be perfectly accurate you can jump and be perfectly accurate you can crouch and be perfectly accurate you can even crouch spam and be perfectly accurate
accurate. And what I mean by perfectly accurate is the bullets are going where your crosshair is moving. Like if you jump in Counter-Strike or Valorant or Escape from Tarkov or basically most games, most shooters, you're going to have a giant amount of inaccuracy while you're flying, moving, crouching, not in Overwatch. However, it does make the shots harder. And what I mean by this is I want you to go in like a random training section and just play McCree or Widowmaker. Look at a bot. Don't shoot at the bot, but just look at them, zoom in or whatever you want to do and just start crouch spamming and moving left and right. I want you to see just how much your crosshair is moving. How far is it moving up, down, left and right? Essentially, when you are moving or twitching like crazy, which becomes a habit in Overwatch because of the fast movement and the ability to be accurate while you're moving, it actually can inversely affect your aim. Now, sometimes that's worth it. Like if you're a Soldier 76 trying to challenge a Widowmaker, it's a lot more worth it for you to do some amount of damage to that Widow because first off, you have a rapid fire weapon that is going to be easy to deal damage with even when you're moving or at least you're going to be able to do some damage with but if you stand still and try to beam down the Widowmaker and she headshots you it's over so it's worth it to make yourself harder to hit at the expense of making it a little bit harder for you to get damage in because if you dodge those shots you're going to win the duel that being said if you're a soldier and you get a flank on someone and they don't know you're there a lot of times the best thing that you could do is stand still and just make sure you hit every single shot plus your helix now on the flip side if you are a Widowmaker up against that same soldier, you do not want to be crouch spamming and moving because you're going to be making your shot harder. And how do you win a one-on-one -on -one with the soldier? Do you win a one-on-one -on -one with the soldier by trading damage with him? Both of y'all moving, you dodging his damage, he dodging your damage? No, you win the matchup by hitting your shot even though the soldier's moving like crazy. Essentially, the matchup will be dictated by his ability to dodge your fire or your ability to hit your shot. And you want to make sure that it's as easy as possible for you to hit that shot. And that's simply understanding the lethality exchange between the matchups. And sometimes this is going to change depending on distance, depending on peel or pocket. And if it ever gets to the point where no matter what you do, you're at a disadvantage. For example, you're that soldier trading a little bit of damage on a widow but now that widow has a freaking mercy pocket and you're never going to be able to burst her down unless you stand still and hit her in the head which if you try to do you're going to get headshotted yourself you should probably just freaking leave the matchup because you're not going to be winning that duel and you're probably going to get picked off if you keep trying to fight it for too long now the second reason why you are not hitting any of your shots or your abilities and this is a common problem with a lot of players because it's really hard to conquer and it's the pressure it's really really hard to conquer the pressure it's easy to hit you know training drums or you're in gun game, you're just shooting crap, but when things are on top of you, when a Genji's diving on top of you, when a Tracer's dueling you, when you're taking damage, you know you have to hit that shot or else you're gonna die. That is when you whiff everything. Because of that pressure, it causes you to freak out. You can't stay cool, calm, and collected. Now, the first way to conquer this pressure is understanding that panicking is actually going to become like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You panic and you freak out because if you don't hit your shots, you're going to die. That's going to make you hit your shots. That's going to make you die. Now, I don't know if that will actually help with the pressure. Maybe that'll make you freak out more. But the second best way to actually deal with pressure is just submit yourself to it all the time. Playing a character a lot and just, you know, maining a character. This is why I really preach specialization, where you can really play a select number of characters or very few characters because you get introduced to a lot of these high pressure scenarios and you could become numb to them if you only play McCree every once in a while it's gonna be kind of weird for you to feel calm and collected when going up against these traces and Genjis that are diving you but if you played McCree against hundreds of tracers and hundreds of Genjis. You know how they work. You know what it takes to beat them. You know what they're likely to do, and you could predict that. And you know how much damage they could do to you. That is how you feel cool, calm, and collected, and you, you're just numb to that pressure, right? You see this often with people that put many, many hours into the game. They just don't even care when they're like a sliver from death. It's not even going to phase them at all because they've been in those scenarios a lot. And that's something that you can create for yourself by making sure that you're exposed to that a lot. And another way that you could do this is by playing free for all. Try free for all is what I suggest. I suggest it a lot. But it's a great way to like walk around as like an Ana and get dove by a million people. That's going to make you freak out for the first like 10 games of free for all. But then afterwards, you're going to be like, eh. No big deal and nothing's gonna be worse than that in a game so that's just something that you can kind of experience and learn and get better at dealing with being under pressure and it's gonna help you hit your abilities a lot more now the next tip that I got for you that is actually just gonna allow you to hit a lot of shots just way more and it's actually cross her placement which is a tip that a lot of people have heard in games like Valorant and CS but you haven't really heard it as much in overwatch even though it's just a 
as important. It's so important that you're pre-aiming angles that enemies are likely to peek from or be at, and that just allows you to move your crosser a lot less and have easier shots. Like, it's crazy cool to just randomly, like, peek an angle as Widow, right? And the enemy Widow is, like, way to the left side angle, and you just flick across your entire screen and headshot them. But that is not as easy as just pre-aiming the angle that you think they're at and moving, like, an inch to headshot them. It's the same way with dealing with a Widowmaker as, you know, a soldier or a McCree. Being able to put your crosshair near where you think they're gonna peek out is gonna allow you to move a lot faster and move a lot less towards where they are, which means you could put a lot more pressure on them hit more shots and you're just going to be more effective overall on top of that if you're playing something like a hanzo aiming head level where the ryan has a shield up is going to allow you to spam a lot more damage right into his head just doing more damage getting more ultimate charge as the game goes on now the last thing that you need to understand to have absolutely godlike aim in overwatch is the difference between tracking and flicking and i think the misunderstood difference in tracking and flicking so these are notoriously the two types of people talk about they talk about tracking and they relate it to characters like soldier and tracer that shoot a lot of tiny pellets where generally you are tracking their movement as they run across and this can be something that is typically associated with that type of spray and then they talk about flicking where they relate it to characters like McCree and Widowmaker where you're flicking around every single shot now that's kind of an oversimplification I'm not gonna say it's wrong but you can track with characters like Widowmaker and McCree and you can flick with with characters like Tracer and Soldier. Essentially, tracking is gonna be your micro movements for targets that are moving along your screen where you can apply your crosser to them and keep it on them either as you're moving or as they're moving. And flicking is gonna be for when you need to move your crosshair towards a target at rapid speeds. Now, some players really like to flick to almost every shot, even if it's a tiny flick. That's a personal preference. Some McCree players I've seen, there's players like Aimbot Calvin, for instance, that really just like to flick to every single headshot. But there are other players that really prefer to track. Someone like Defran has a lot more tracky style aim. Even when he's using a character like Widowmaker, he's flicking a lot less and instead just tracking onto the head and not getting off the head. Now, sometimes even if your preference is tracking, you're gonna have to be incorporating flicks as well. And that's why it's important to understand and utilize both. Just because maybe you're a tracking based Widowmaker, right? Where you like to follow the person's head or put your crosshair as close to the head as possible, follow it around and then hit your shot. If a Widowmaker pops up to the right of you really far away, you can't just track over there very simply. You have to flick over there and at the very least get as close as possible so that it's a lot easier for you to track onto them. And if you're a tracer who prefers something like tracking as well, if an enemy per appears to the right of you really quickly, being able to blink and flick to them before you then engage your tracking is something that you should also be prepared and practiced for. So these are the two things that you need to understand and mastering both of them and incorporating them into your gunplay is going to be your best bet. But if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments down below and go to the Game Leap website right now for a special 50% off sale. You're never going to find a better opportunity to surpass your limits and climb with ease. So go check it out right now in the links down below. But that's all I got for you today. Thanks so much for coming by. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.